Wow, as soon as I planned to start recording, it literally just started raining. <laughs> Fucking swear word. Oh, that's all right. I'm still gonna do it. I'm probably gonna get drenched, but I don't really give a shit because I think this thing is advertised as waterproof. Like I haven't dipped it in water or anything, but we'll find out. I'm gonna wait until I can get to some more interesting scenery before I begin talking. Okay, so I did just forget about the limitations of my body. <laughs> I can only walk for so long before my back starts fucking up. Okay, so today I wanted to discuss something that is probably vitally important for a lot of reasons. It is safety. Safety, don't talk to strangers, kids. <laughs> um, so, first of all, one of the most grateful things about mental illness, as stupid as that fucking sounds, is the moments of pure clarity where you finally get to see yourself again. And I'm in one of those states right now. It's why if you watch people online, sometimes you'll see them disappear for fucking God knows how long. Life is just like that, but mental illness makes it even more like that. Anyway, so with the combination of my understanding of consciousness itself, my psychoactive experiments and research, and literally my suicide attempt. I have zero fear of death now. The only thing I sort of fear a little bit is dying before I can get my book out. And oh my God, hang on, this is important. I need to interrupt. No, no, don't run away. You're so cute. Wait, don't run, you'll scare them, you'll Look how big the neck. Whoa, fuck. No. My stupidity made it run away because it's all clay. It's all clay. Oh my god, he stopped again. Use the stick. Use the snake stick to help balance. Use the stick cunt to balance. Oh, there we go. Wow, look at that. It's absolute. You fucker. That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I just stepped on shit. I gotta rub my foot into the it's fucking clay. Um, so, I had this sort of revelation about trauma, PTSD, mental illness, all that. This stuff's gonna be going in my book, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be going in in this particular way. So I thought I'd just do a video, because this is important. I'm pretty sure the title will say something along the lines of safety, online versus three-dimensional <laughs> um, well physical I don't know three-dimensional really gets people going huh when you start talking about dimensions people are just like yo you like losing touch with reality bro because not a lot of people actually understand the idea of dimensions anyway tangent so every now and then actually I'm just gonna pan the camera away because there is beautiful wildlife around here too oh hello Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> One of the things I noticed about traumatic experiences is at least, so I had one just recently. I mean, it's just an experience now, but after working through it, I mean, it was a, it was an experience, then it turned into a traumatic experience, and then it turned back into an experience. So it was sort of like a bit of a revelation about PTSD, and obviously this doesn't apply to every single fucking scenario in the PTSD spectrum. Everyone has PTSD in all different ways, from all different situations. And it really got me thinking about self-defense and the idea of protecting yourself when you're vulnerable. Because as much as we have evolved as a society, as a human race, there is still a large amount of primal beings that exist in our society. And I'm not just talking about dogs, snakes, cats, spiders. A large amount of humans are still operating on a primal level. A lot of humans don't have enhanced self-awareness and reflectivity abilities. You'll, you'll generally sort of see this in different groups. Just one day when you're hanging out with some friends when you're walking in public 
literally just sit there for a bit, observe people, observe their behaviors, see their emotional reactivity, and, and you can see the primality in certain people. Some people are sort of, I usually can refer to it as a low consciousness state and a heightened, like a high consciousness state. High consciousness usually comes, usually what comes along with that is like wisdom, um, life experience, um, and understanding of consciousness itself, the ability to reflect, etc. Low consciousness beings usually act on impulse, emotion, emotional reactivity mostly. Um, natural responses so me hungry me want the food basically a snake so what i'm gonna do actually is i'm gonna show you a clip of what happened i got this clip for police purposes um the dickhead thought it was to save me <laughs> i called him a dickhead twice as well before the camera went on <laughs> um not that that matters at all this guy was dangerous. And there are a lot of people out there like this. Well, not a lot. You gotta remember negativity bias is an extremely dangerous thing. It's a natural process in a human to look for the negatives. So you experience 99 good people, you encounter one fucking horrible one. It's almost as if you're biologically wired to anticipate every single other 99 people you encounter to be like that. That's not the case and you need to fight that. Not fight it, you need to accept it and understand it. When you fight things, they get worse. I'm gonna roll the clip. If I were you, fuck off. Say it again. Say it again. I just told you. Say it again. Yeah. Fucking camera. Cut. Say it again. What are you gonna do? Say it again. You so I was just I was just looking at the beautiful moon up here. I was just looking at the beautiful moon up here. And this insane person. Fuck off. I don't know. Inka? Hey! Come here. I'll pump you and your fucking dog. What is wrong with you? Huh? Are you, you drunk? Why are you drunk? You want something? Alright, we're back. Change of scenery as well. I took a little break. Did a little bit of meditation. About to go through some much more interesting scenery and probably get more soaked and wet and muddy. Um, <laughs> and the snake stick will probably come in more handy, but it is not as hot as it was in the last few days. Actually, it's been bucketing non-stop, but anyway. I'm actually going to use my dominant hand here because need to balance okay non-dominant hand is sort of an extension of your subconscious it's a little thing it's actually very fascinating if you're ever interested in that very sentence itself just ask me in discord sometime yeah if you have an open mind <laughs> um, okay so that situation was I think it really depends so that situation usually would I'm a pretty arrogant and ignorant person sometimes and if that guy ended up hitting me I'll leave a full you know what I'm just gonna leave a full copy paste of the police report I put in um, in the description if you want to know more but in a nutshell I was walking my Pomeranian in a place that for as long as I've remembered has been very safe no one's ever started shit everyone minds their own business but i even if this guy attacked me which i'm i was so sure he was going to <laughs> such a tough guy um i couldn't fight back because i had inca the pomeranian i had to make the conscious choice to retreat now that led so first of all there's this thing called toxic masculinity it's essentially, in a nutshell, this primal way of being a male in society, in nature. Uh, it's more actually society. It's not necessarily a natural thing, I think. It's sort of a natural thing from a low consciousness perspective. But as you evolve more, as you learn more about the human mind, about keeping yourself calm in these situations, about not giving a shit what other people think, about fostering and cultivating peace and love over dickheadness <laughs> um oh, that was a big tangent hang on give me a second i gotta go back okay that's where we were describing the primal ooga booga of toxic masculinity so i have pure ocd which means i get intrusive thoughts um 
I can obsess over things. The obsession part is just sort of a habitual thing, I reckon. Um, it can, I reckon the tendency to just obsess can lead to OCD so much more easily. So, after this event, there was intrusive thoughts of like, am I truly a man? I back down, I never fucking back down. Like that, that persona that I've cultivated, I like, I don't like backing down. Um, in a way, that's sort of a little bit of toxic masculinity, but the ability to distinguish whether or not, to, to actually distinguish a threat in multiple perspectives within that moment, I think of that as an upgrade to my previous self. Previous self would have just looked at it from a very limited perspective. Usually sort of an emotional reaction is no conscious intervention. And then <laughs> level two is like, uh, I mean, level one actually. Primal reaction is level zero. Level one is maybe having one perspective and being ready. I thought I was maybe operating on like a level 20 there, thinking of so many different ways to proceed with this. Anyway, yeah, the conscious decision to back down because I couldn't fight with Inca. He was threatening basically to kill me and my dog. All just because she was taking a piss on a nature strip, not even on his lawn. I'm pretty sure he was on drugs, some sort of drug. Anyway, whatever the fuck he was on. Um, there was all the insults and literal like energy of the threat and the sort of person they were. Like I, I imagine that whoever their family is, they're getting psychologically or physically abused. Um, and it was interesting watching it back. So I think, yeah, there was intrusive thoughts about what sort of man am I, I back down. Thank fuck I've got a good environment around me that fosters that. Um, and Amanda, my wife, was telling me reassuring me of like I did the right thing Inca would have died if I got into a fight with this guy um, luckily he didn't hit me so I didn't actually even have to consider that he got really close though I had to hold my hand out yeah and keep saying this will be self-defense and intrusive thoughts about submission and dominance me and Amanda we are we like to play the BDSM in the bed. <laughs> um, so, obviously there's a sexual aspect attached to the idea of submission and dominance and what pure OCD loves, loves to do is twist things in your head. So you get intrusive thoughts. At, 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 in essence, they come from a creative place, but um, it's not pleasant. It's, it's a mental hellscape, pure OCD. You get thoughts you don't want to get. So I was getting intrusive thoughts about the situation, about the very concepts of dominance and submission, um, about the idea of energy fields, um, environments, people, perspectives. There's a fucking shit show in the head. And then there was also the, once I worked through it with my psych and Amanda and people who I cared about, it was a mistake telling my, telling my parents. Yeah, I think my mum's fine, but um, they are um, certain someone actually exasperated the situation, made it even worse, so I went even more downhill. So uh, I'm gonna have to have a talk with someone at some point. Now we get to the good part. Ooh. I've actually done a video on this on my vlog channel. So, anyway, where was I? For fuck's sake. <laughs> okay, so I was talking about sort of the process that was leading to, in essence, what was PTSD such a brief encounter um, so I worked through it I understand all of the intricacies of what happened I understand it was a low consciousness being literally a primate anyway so there was there's a complete understanding and knowledge of the entire situation that happened but we're, we're humans we literally sort of like we're I mean we are made of energy science has fucking discovered this <laughs> There's also a theory of quantum consciousness. I'm not going to go into it too much because these fucking tangents are insane. Like, not they're not insane. It's just the amount of tangents I go on is insane now. Um, God damn it. Oh, yeah. We're made of energy and emotions are energy. And it's, it's almost as if there is a period that you need to go through. Literally, you need to progress through the timeline. You need to just give... You need to just wait for energy to dispel. And... 
I understood what happened, etc. So there was the understanding and knowledge, the environment to speak about it openly and safely, the support, then the time. And then once the time has passed, I did the difficult thing of asking myself, what is PTSD? What is trauma? What is the biological function of these things? And there's this technique I do. I learned it off YouTube. I can't remember who it was, but you literally put a question. You write down a question on a piece of paper and you put it underneath your pillow. Now, given the amount of consciousness research I do, unconsciousness research, subconscious research, um, there is an insane amount of things that we don't know about the unconscious mind. Um, hopefully, I can gather enough data one day to make a book on it. But let me just assure you that if you do this and you cultivate and practice lucid dreaming, paying more attention to your unconscious mind, mystical things start happening. <laughs> Honestly, mystical is just unexplained science within our paradigm. So I get, I get answers. And the basic understanding I got was there is a fundamental aspect of our reality. There's something called entropy. It's just chaos. The universe is literally has so many chaotic elements that even if you foster love, peace, there is always going to be entropic elements within the universe. And there is also the idea of human ignorance and arrogance. And what essentially this encounter taught me was that there was an ignorance of the entropic nature of the universe. I was so happy in my own world, walking Inca. I mean, just in general now, when my mental illness is not playing up, I am so happy, I am so satisfied, I am so at peace. Um, I think my battery is about to go dead. Got to switch it out. Yeah, it's, it's, it's about to die. Give me a sec. I'll lean against this tree. Oh my God, I did a video here. <laughs> that was the Yeti video. <laughs> <laughs> okay give me a sec I mean it's not really a sec for you is it I'm actually gonna try and stick this in the ground this is really beautiful the wonders of nature nature's tripod <laughs> but I want it to face this way no it's sinking stop there we go okay so this understanding of consciousness itself being this is an experiential thing by the way as i said earlier um there are now theories coming out by people with established academic bullshit because honestly these days in this paradigm the only people the only people the only people you listen to have some sort of credentials within the the stupid fucking hierarchy of academia anyway some very academic individuals have proposed a theory that consciousness is quantum. It's on a quantum level. Now, those of us with the understanding of what consciousness is from an experiential perspective, those of us that have dived into it, into the, the melting points, um, the samadhi states of meditation, the near-death experiences, the etc., uh, etc., cetera, et cetera, we sort of understand that consciousness itself, by itself, is just, it's, it's, it's love. And um, the Vedic, the Vedic tradition, the Vedic culture, calls the concept of the void, the Akasha, and the concept of this omnipresent consciousness that permeates through everything, um, Brahman. So, Brahman itself, so the Akasha is a void, it's void of everything, basically, that's the idea. And Brahman is the consciousness that permeates through everything. It connects all of us. Um, and then there's more terminologies, but for another time. Essentially, when you encounter the Atman, the true self, and Brahman, and I think the philosophy that they're the same thing, uh, Advaita. Um, this is Vedic tradition, by the way. Vedic culture, Vedic understanding of consciousness, which I think resonates the most with me. It's love. 
Love transcends everything. Unfortunately, there is this illusion of separateness within a lot of humans. The human, it's, it's a natural thing. I think it's like part of evolving as a human, as a species. We need to reach a certain stage where we get to this understanding. Um, unfortunately, this illusion of separateness creates all the other bullshit. And it's as if like the Akasha, the void, and the illusion of separateness is primarily the pieces that create this entropy, this chaos. Because um, Brahman itself means no harm. It's actually very empathetic, it's altruistic, it's full of love. When you're encompassed in it, it, it has healing properties. That's one of the main reasons I'm trying to work towards enlightenment. Because if I can get there, my mental health will be, and physical health will be. Now obviously age is just a three-dimensional restriction, and everyone ages and will eventually cease to exist on this plane. But, making sure it's still recording, Yes. <laughs> um, so part of the human experience is learning about all of this, but when you don't have all the pieces of the puzzle, it's very easy to become ignorant to the actual reality of reality. <laughs> and the reality of the reality we live in <laughs> is there are entropic elements and there is an illusion of separateness and there is trauma and there is untreated mental illness and there is anger and there is hatred and this manifests in all different ways there's fear fear is like almost like the yoda saying it's very I i'm pretty sure was it george lucas that wrote star wars like on some level he had to have entered some certain consciousness things at some point anyway fear tends to be the root of a lot of things there was this ignorance about our reality I was like ah, Inca you want to take a picture of the moon it's so pretty <laughs> ah, and then someone tried to kill me <laughs> they never specifically used the word kill by the way they were very careful I could sense this criminality within their mind so there was like some semblance of intelligence, like a single brain cell or something, operating with a main directive of self-preservation, but not necessarily because you wouldn't start a fight if you had enough self-preservation. So this taught me a lot of things, this experience. And I have other experiences that have PTSD, that, that they have led to PTSD in nature. Um, so what I understood from this is, number one, sort of PTSD in this situation. I started thinking of ways I could take down a much larger opponent. I started obsessing over it. I started trying to think of legal ways to protect myself with um, something that can be used as a weapon because I don't know any self-defense tactics. I'm planning to learn them now. I just have to work through the OCD because touching people is very difficult but if push comes to shove you're gonna have to defend yourself and your life your three-dimensional life and if I have to I will kill to defend myself um, not purposefully but by accident like it doesn't matter and also I read something on reddit that was interesting if you don't know self-defense would you rather have an assault charge or be dead it's a serious question if you're in a life and death situation in a three-dimensional reality would you rather break a few laws and survive or be dead? That's the crux of it if you don't know self-defense and you want to protect yourself. But it's important to not always think like that. This is where I think PTSD comes in. Not every situation is going to be like this. There's negativity bias. Not everyone's like this. Most of humanity is good. <laughs> Most people have good intentions. It's the negativity bias. There are absolute dickheads and cunts and fuckwits and people suffering from mental illness as well, so that's out of their control, that can threaten your life at any moment. But it's important to realize that about 99% of humanity, it's a very arbitrary number, I just came up with it. Probably a lot less, but <laughs> it's good to think like this though. It's not gonna kill you. 
So the only time you should ever think about self-defense is when you're in a vulnerable state. Because think about it, when you feel safe, you feel relaxed, you feel calm. When you're, when you're by yourself, a lot of you probably do this, you start singing. I sing to myself, I talk to myself when I'm alone. As soon as someone comes near me, it's almost as if a little bit of guard comes up, and it depends on who the person is as well. One of the main points here is safety brings confidence. And vulnerability brings down safety. Or like a mathematical equation. So I came to the conclusion that if I'm walking Inca, a Pomeranian, I'm in an extremely vulnerable state because I can't fight back. And if I need to fight back, I need to get extremely inventive or extremely lucky because she will die. She's like this fucking small. <laughs> you remove all the fur and she's just a fucking, she's Dobby off Harry Potter, but like five times smaller. If I'm walking by myself, I will fight back if I need to. But with Inca, I literally can't. And that's not always the case. If push comes to shove, you have to fight back. Now, this is one of the main reasons why when, my, when I spoke to my parents about this, my dad stressed me out so much and actually made the PTSD so much worse. His wisdom was so emotionally charged that it actually fed the energy. And there was also a lot of toxic masculinity sprinkled in there. And it was interesting, after as well, after there's some semblance of calm, it's like, sorry, I get a bit excited sometimes. It's a famous saying of his. It's really no excuse though, after how many fucking years of doing that, anyone who does this, the emotional reactivity, the emotional react reactivity, especially with those you love, can feed stress and mental illness. So be careful who you open up to about these things. Anyway, vulnerability creates a literal three-dimensional sort of pro projection of attackability? I don't know. <laughs> like, in nature, there is, on a primal level, there is predator and prey. <laughs> literally, to quote the movies, predator. I could, I, to this day, I still can't do the predator thing. Um, I could probably do it for practice. <laughs> and prey. Um, predator and prey. And there are so many primal beings within our world that you need to understand this fundamental aspect of reality. And because of this, if you are in a vulnerable state, if you're carrying something expensive, capitalistic version of vulnerability, carrying something very expensive like a GoPro, carrying something very expensive like, I don't know, fucking pretend this is a fucking solid gold rod. It makes you a target to predators. Obviously not everyone. So there are a lot of high consciousness people out there. There's a lot of people operating on a, like a mid-level and there's a lot of, there's a giant fucking chunk operating on low consciousness. But it's usually only a very small fraction of the low consciousness people. Well, actually in all of the categories that actually have sort of bad intentions or resort to anger, hatred, violence, fear, and etc. And it's, it's, it's primarily, if you can think ahead, this is one of the only times I reckon you should actually think, there's plenty of other times, but to think ahead actually creates stress and anxiety. One of the best pieces of advice I can give from this whole experience is don't, don't be protective all the time. Think ahead of like, if you're going to go somewhere, will I be vulnerable? Will something create a sense of vulnerability? Or will I be, you know, safe? I mean, obviously, you can't always be completely safe. And I, I think sort of what PTSD stems from primarily is when you have this, you have this sense of safety and it gets fractured like that. And it just, it traumatizes you, literally, because you thought you were safe. This is one of the reasons why PTSD, I think, is so prominent in the developmental stage. Because as a kid, your family unit is meant to be one of the safest places you can be in. So if you can anticipate a situation where there will be some sense of vulnerability, prepare, prepare a little bit, prepare. Safety will bring confidence. If you, ha if, if you know you will be, you have some semblance of safety, obviously 
you could carry around, around the fucking Rambo knife or the Predator knife, okay? Like, the one Dutch uses in Predator, I think. You could carry that around for as long as you want. It's not going to save you in every fucking scenario, though. It just adds a little bit of safety. Obviously, that's a fucking overkill thing. It's also illegal, in Australia at least. So at least in Australia, you got to get a little bit creative if you don't know self-defense, physical self-defense. And honestly, don't, you need to not always think like this. Only if there is a sense of vulnerability. And some people may think that's a bit overkill, but it, I feel like it's, 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 it's not until you actually experience situations where your actual life is in danger. What's interesting is I've encountered situations like this when I was younger, but there wasn't enough self-awareness and consciousness development to actually process it properly. So literally, just like mistakes in life, if you don't learn from the mistake, it happens again and again and again until you fucking get the point. It's one of the main reasons um, why I feel so comfortable talking to the camera by myself because there's no, generally, there's no one around me at all. And I feel a complete sense of safety. And this is for snakes. I have other methods for people now. One of the, I think one of the best methods from a legal perspective is just a lanyard. It's enough to swing at someone and to get some distance between you and them. I learned that off a friend who sent me a video of someone. So thank you. I'm not gonna name you, just in case it is illegal in some respect. But once again, would you rather an assault charge or would you rather be dead? <laughs> the online world, the other half of this conversation, I've completely ignored it up until this point because it's so much more simpler, to be honest. You block people, that's it. You don't, there's no effort at all. You literally just press a few buttons and they're gone from your entire internet existence. I mean, you get into cyber crimes and cyber stalking, etc. that's when it becomes quite an issue and becomes three-dimensional. When things become three-dimensional, it becomes a threat to your life generally. That's when these sort of realizations kick in. But I, I actually don't think these realizations can properly kick in in a fully online experience. Transitioning from an online world to the physical world, like living most of my life online, transitioning to a physical world has been quite the fucking experience, to say the least. I see a minion McDonald's cup. <laughs> I, I'm gonna pick that up because this place is beautiful. Literally, even though I have OCD, it's gonna trigger the fuck out of me. You need to lean into fear. You need to lean into it. Only when you're comfortable. See, I'm in a good state right now. It'll probably, it's already triggering me a bit, it's slimy. Sort of, yuck. Ugh. So th there is a lot of layers here. With trauma. And I'm, I'm hoping to completely unpack them and hopefully help people out who read the book. And the book is primarily about pure OCD, but it'll dive into mm, some of the things about my, um, uh, the power of the unconscious mind, how I can help you so much in life, and dreams. And I call them, you know what? I, I don't really give a shit if anyone steals it, to be honest. Dreams are intrusive simulations, just like intrusive thoughts, intrusive simulations. That's the ego part of me, like, I came up with it. <laughs> Honestly, someone, someone else probably did as well. The very concept, once you understand that dreams are intrusive simulations, they, you strip away all meaning. Obviously not all of them, once you start learning about consciousness and once you start recalling dreams, etc., they are a very powerful tool. Um, and once you, you can become semi-aware or completely aware, self-aware within a dream, they become this landscape where you can experiment with things. And even with self-awareness, there is still intrusive elements that seep into the dream world. So at its essence, all dreams are intrusive simulations. But anyway, the online world creates this false sense of safety about the real world. What I found interesting was that individual 
I, th- I think they, they thought they were dealing with some sort of snowflake. And I, I don't say that to insult people who are actually extremely sensitive to so many different things. That sensitivity comes from places that everyone has their own experiences. Another very important aspect about three-dimensional reality and primal, encountering primal beings within society is your appearance. Appearance can create vulnerability as well. Just the act of literally like wearing sustainable, also by the way, thank you so much to my worker for helping me get these through NDIS, because it actually, this is so therapeutic, literally. Being able to traverse land like this. (laughs) But literally just looking a little bit meaner, a little bit more independent can create this confidence within yourself and generally when you have a confidence within yourself not always because I was extremely confident when this happened it can sort of exude this projection of energy for lack of better words within the quantum field of don't don't mess with me it doesn't always apply there are some individuals that are so fucking far gone from the actual aspect of consciousness and they are so separated from the idea that everything is connected that there is no semblance of logic and also when you mix drugs in with the mix that's when the total entropic nature can become extremely dangerous so i hope i hope this has helped if this even helps one person this is a motto i stick by i came up with it but honestly everything in life is like a culmination of everything you experience so maybe someone has said it before but as far as i'm concerned i came up with it If it can even help one person, I am so grateful that one person, you, if you watched up until this point, if you gained some semblance of information and knowledge about life, I am so grateful. I was going to say I'm so grateful for something, but I I don't know. I'm just grateful. (laughs) I'm grateful you made it to the end of the video and got something out of it. Life is very difficult. And if life has been extremely easy for you so far, I hate to say it, but you're playing on easy mode at the moment. Life likes to chuck entropy at you. So it's not that you should always be prepared because that creates a constant state of fight or flight and that leads to literally mental illness, physical illness, etc. Just understand that the universe is entropic. And understand negativity bias as well. If you don't know what negativity bias is, search it up. It's probably one of the most important things to know about in regards to encounters. Um, bad shit. It really puts a perspective. Most of the world is nice. Nature is literally love. Like, literally. Like, people can call it spiritual or whatever, but... I know from my own experiential journey, my experience, couldn't care less what anyone says what science says. Science is getting there though, with the quantum consciousness theory. Um, But science can never actually experience the love. That's a purely human thing, at least as far as I know. Not just human, but it's a purely biological thing. Maybe artificial intelligence someday. Okay, tangents. Thank you for watching so much. I really appreciate it if you made it all all the way through this. Probably going to do a Minecraft thumbnail because it's the best. Was it like, maybe do like a a Sigma, a Sigma Yolandos, like, or something. <laughs> uh, brain rot. You know, it's actually one more tangent. No, no more tangents, Yulin. I don't actually entirely believe in the concept of brain rot. Language evolves. You speak a certain language somewhere, somewhere else. You speak English in a non-English speaking country. They're like, what the fuck? What are you saying? Does that sound similar to someone who's viewing brain rot? Anyway. Thank you for listening so much once again. I really appreciate it and I'm grateful. Wow, it's like after that I got this out, I'm getting intrusive thoughts again. It's like the OCE is like, you got your stuff out of the way, time to torment you again. (laughs) For fuck's sake. (laughs) That's okay. Just meditate, breathe. I'll see you in the next one. Adios. Also, I'm not Mexican. I'm literally Italian and German. So literally, I should be saying, I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!
I don't know why I ever started saying adios. I just thought it was funny. Tangent again.